Jackie Cash and Laurie Kilmartin. Yep. <laughs> I'm awake. <laughs> I've been traveling since like 3 a.m. And I oh didn't my realize God. that my Southwest Airlines was one of those bus ones mm -hmm. that just stopped in a city and people got off and other people got back on. And I had to sit there and wait for the plane to take off again. So where'd you come? Where, wait, where you're coming from Minnesota? Right. I yep. did a, a gig in Hutchinson, Minnesota. Second month they're running it. Hmm. It pays really well. Seats about 110 people. Sold out cool. all three shows last nice. month. Last month was Pete Lee. He he sold. They had two shows. They sold those out, so they added uh -huh. a third. Pete had uh, two shows. They added a third, and then they added a fourth. Wow! And then, yeah, and so, um, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. They uh, they should have, um. I have to remember to ask about who's going to be opening, but, um, okay. yeah. does something bad happen? Not bad. It was, uh, so the Friday first show, the MC is sort of the house MC. He did, he's, and they have a, they have a mic, they have a mic on Thursdays. So, um, the MC came from that and he's all, but he also lives in the twin cities and he, he makes a drive in, but, um, because Hutchinson probably an hour fifteen out of Minneapolis. Is it big enough? It's it big enough to support its own room. Obviously, is it? Is it? It's upstairs of a of a no, sort I mean of the a town. pub. No, the town's fourteen thousand people. Oh, okay. But it's uh, but it's one of those towns. Uh, it's living off the tit of uh, teat of three M. So oh, I a, see. It's, it's a three M town. town. Yeah. Oh wow. And super white couldn't be the it was the whitest town i've been in and i was just in like burlington vermont <laughs> yeah <laughs> like i was that's i mean burlington vermont has people of color which is why bernie sanders thinks all black people have phds but um <laughs> but other than that it's like uh hutchinson is also i went to the target and i had to move my car because i almost parked next to a trump pence sticker uh-huh and I was like, I can't even park my car next to this thing. I'm not even, I don't even want any part of this. And, um, but Friday I got there and the food's good. The, the room's great. The staff is incredibly nice. The two guys that own the place, super supportive, mm -hmm. excited to be in stand in stand up comedy as a business. Oh, and, that'll end in about a year. I'm glad you got in early. Congrats yeah, to you. Keely. I get it. I get in on, I get in early. I get in yeah. early. So, um, yeah, so I'm just gonna, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> That's how much money I make. That's, so that'll never happen again. I mean, well, he's gonna, they're gonna get burned one weekend and then no mas. Wow. Uh, nice. Well, you don't know. You don't know. So, but I'm glad that I got what in did, early. What did they charge him per ticket? Uh, it was $25 a ticket, $45 if you wanted to eat. And the oh, food's okay. good. They have steaks and, and salmon. That and... covers it. All right. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And so the, but the, so the MC was this, uh, both of my openers, uh, so younger black men and uh, the Ken guy, real energetic, good, perfectly good dude. Feature did a lot of crowd work. So much crowd work that I literally, I had to, uh, the, the audience was, exhausted by the time i got up teachers shouldn't do crowd work i'm sorry i'm gonna make a blatant statement they shouldn't also the next day i asked him if he wouldn't yeah and uh i also there was a couple of things that happened and it was ridiculous and um first of all his he was very funny when he didn't do crowd work mm -hmm. he, he had material it was delightful yeah, right. his name's like boima or something and he's uh, from Africa, and he told me he was from Africa, and he was wearing entirely all fatigues. And I said, Are, "You're not from. You weren't a boy soldier in the Sierra Leone." Were you? <laughs> oh and um, wow, what do I know? And uh, and so he, if uh, and he said, "I was a boy soldier, but in uh, Liberia, and I just brought the the guy's pot when I was wow. a kid." Oh. And then I said. Really? And he goes, absolutely not. Yeah! So, <laughs> like, how did, oh 
my god no he, it's not real he is he was i know i know i know yeah but um, that's it would have been the greatest i that's why i brought it up i was like because that's a rich vein my friend you got to get in on that dude, why not do 20 minutes and then say i'm kidding i mean please please it could be pray he, pray on americans super, who don't know right super charming uh had a lot of great premises was very funny and um you know they were both a little dirty but they were both kind of new and um and it was fine once they were both doing material it didn't matter but first show saturday mm -hmm. the mc brought a guest set Ooh, for first show okay. saturday and i said to him did did you get that an okay for that from the headliner <laughs> from the headliner and uh and he was like the 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 guest he said uh well ken said i could go up and i said oh is ken headlining oh nice look at you and yes i i was so irritated yeah that uh, and then ken said well no this isn't going to affect your time and i said right no of course it's not going to affect my time but it's my show so you have to ask the traditionally you ask the headliner right and then he wouldn't look at me who wouldn't the mc but, or the yeah yes. he wouldn't make eye contact with me until i said even if it's a woman headliner Jackie. i literally was i was Goddamn. genuinely irritated yeah and then he and then he looked at me and shrugged and i was like well i feel loved not at all but i didn't back down so i felt good about that no here's the other thing um even if it doesn't affect your time it's the audience it's it's a comedy fatigue now you have, yeah. you have four personalities they have to get to know get invested in applaud uh let's hear it for blank 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 and then the next yeah. one goes up. Let's hear it for blank, 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 blank. Like it's tiring. Even yeah. if it doesn't You just it unpacked it. You just unpacked it. The reasoning why we were taught that you have to ask. And if there's going to be a guest set, it's on a weekend, it's going to be second show. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Because first show is tight. The turnaround's tight. Or how about this? Just do it on Thursday. And if you guys don't have a Thursday show, no guest set. How about that? How about that? I mean, how about go, go, go get some stage there. time? Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, um, my, my contract said I had to do 60 minutes. So I did. Yeah. Yeah. And, and by the end of the, and they were super quiet. Cause I, <laughs> um, the MC was like, you know, they're really conservative. And I said, that is not my fault. They booked me <laughs> and I, I'm not, you know, you're not, I, you are a known quantity. They wanted it. Right. And I am not, it's not even that you want to make abortion political. That's on you. I it's not political to me. It's healthcare. So if I do my made of bees joke about abortion and you tighten up about it, so sad, too bad. I didn't, you know, and I had so many people tell me that one woman in the front row was like, I just spent the day watching all your reels. And uh oh like, no. Well, look forward to hearing those jokes again. I know surprise <laughs> is the key, but uh not, not, I do have 20 new minutes and Maria and I did joke machine and she fucking fixed my white flight joke. Yay. Um, I've tried it twice, twice now. And the first time it worked really well. And the second time it uh, worked less well as it, as is the want with new jokes, because I stick it in the middle of the NASA bit, right. Explaining uh -huh. white flight versus gentrification. Uh -huh. And then I, I just did a, I just did like a real, um what's call it uh tiktok explanation of what I watched it it was good yeah it's funny yeah yeah um i uh so okay so features should not do crowd work for two reasons one is the headliner does crowd work and if you do crowd work you're burning up everybody Right. Two, the headliner doesn't do crowd work. If you do crowd work, the audience wants more of it because they love to be the center of attention. And now the headliner's fucked because they just want to tell jokes. Yep. Three is you're featuring because you don't have the time. So you need to get the time. And the time is more jokes. Yep. You need to be replacing jokes that aren't that good. You need to be adding jokes. You need to be getting 45 to 50 minutes of jokes only. And then when you get to headline, then you can fuck off and do whatever you want. But don't, don't, you're getting, you, you need to, featuring is a golden time 
where the pressure's off you and all you have to do is get up there and figure out how to kill with your act. So that's Sweet what spot. you need to do. Sweet spot. Yeah. Uh, that, that should make everybody raise their Patreon to $10. That should make everybody... <laughs> Uh, jack their max fun gifty thing when the max fun drive happens except another couple of bucks not not features because they don't they're not making any money <laughs> oh right there's no money yeah. but uh you know well i i uh was at roosters this week and i just uh we have a sunday show you had a sunday show right yeah so um it, i haven't had a sunday show in a long time you know most clubs now they they wrap it up on saturday night so um you know, it's that kind of anticlimactic feeling, but also I forgot how much Sunday shows are like, I don't give a fuck. I already, I already crushed on Saturday. So I don't, you know, I'm just going to goof off a little bit. Casual day, man. It's casual. I love day. it. Yeah. Yep. So it was a lot of fun. And, uh, I did, I did have, I have a bit that I reworked from a while ago that I'm like, it works pretty well, you know, Good. and I just tweaked how I get into it. And, uh, well, I tweaked a lot about it, but it's this, this, the kernel of it's still in there. Anyway, so I'm excited about that. This dumb special I'm taping in a, like a month. So I have to do an hour. And I can't do an hour without doing some stuff that was on corset. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that's just, you know. You might as well, though. I know. It's, no one. It's I mean, there's there's no reason not to. Yeah. Um, and then, um, you know, so all, all week I was doing like at least an hour, I did an hour and eight one night, you know, I did, I kept going and I just would go into the crowd. I mean, there might be crowd work on the special too. I don't know. We'll just see. We'll see. But you know, who, what is it anymore? What's a special, you know, it's, it's <laughs> going to be I was chopped just... up into tiny pieces and put on TikTok. So who fucking cares? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I just want proof of life. I want you guys to know I was alive. And I did comedy. <laughs> and here, here is. Can you please minutes. call your new special proof of life? <laughs> That's a great name. I have 120 30 second TikTok clips. That's all I think about it now. I don't That's even, it. it's not even stand up anymore for as far as these things are concerned. But you know, I mean, um, I've been putting up a lot more reels and cutting things up and spending, you know, yep. putting in the hours. It's hours. You know, boring and um it's not boring i mean it's it's finding it's a grind little, it's a grind grind it's a grind mm -hmm. but it kind of works i mean like friday night we had a good turnout friday night there's just one show and then there weren't that many reservations for saturday either i'm like fuck you know mm -hmm. and uh so saturday morning i put up a clip from friday at roosters when nice. uh, excuse me from thursday sorry and um, I don't know that that did it. I don't know what did it. But then Saturday night was sold out. The first show. That's great. That's Second great. show was pretty good. Way mm -hmm. better than like on Friday. And, um, you know, people are just buying shit the day of. And yes, that's happening more and more often. It's really frustrating, I guess, for club owners because they don't know how many servers to to have, you know. And if, if all of a sudden you're sold out and you only have two servers because you had 30 reservations, you know, people are going to get their shit late. You're not going to sell as much. You're not making as much, you know, so yep. it's weird for them. I don't know. I, it, it's, it's not my problem. I'm just like, I saw it in action. because It'll the, hurt us though. It, it, it's like the things right. that aren't our problems will of course affect yeah, us. Yeah. I mean, if a club is making, has all the servers and they're all just hustling and getting all the drinks out, they're selling a lot more stuff and the club mm -hmm. makes more money. So it's always good. And I'm sure at the end of the week, you know, all of our weeks, the club goes, I made this amount of money with this headliner, you know, because, you know, they used to, so there were some guys that would do shots on stage that were fake shots just because it would make the audience drink more. Mm -hmm. And the club owner at the end of the week, they go, oh, I sold way more booze with this guy. So I'm going to bring him back sooner. You know, so yep. a lot of, a lot of club comics would do that. So mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I kind of think they still, you know, if you're an act and you sell a lot of tickets, but maybe everyone drinks water, they're not going to race to bring you back. That's not, you know what I mean? Like, you know, the theater wants people eating popcorn that costs $10 I, for a bucket. Was it Angela? I think Seattle laughs. I forget. There was a, there was a, a couple of years 
it's probably six, seven years ago, where um, I was opening a lot for Maria and uh, some somebody, and it might have been Angela, was telling us, or it might have been a different club, but they were they were taking note of what the audience would order. It, remember when Greg Barrett you can, uh, wrote that book? The Sex and the City book? Not that into you. Yeah, he's just yeah. not that into you. Yeah. Right. So his audience was known. We found out that he had been there the week before. And the yeah. manager said that it wasn't Seattle. But the manager had said that all of his fans were middle-aged women yeah. who ordered a lot of wine. Wow. And a lot of salads and a lot of yeah. desserts. Okay. That's, that's good income. You make a lot right. of money off a salad, right? Yeah, right. Because it's not, it's not very dense. That's a, it's, it's a lettuce. It's, a, it's just it's lettuce. So you cheap, keep selling. Right. You're selling lettuce. So, and then what's what's Maria's audience? Um, Maria's audience were salads as well, and not as much booze. Right. So yeah, and um, yeah, I don't what, know. You yeah. know what? If you are own a club and you have an audience that you know is not a big, not maybe sober. Would it would it behoove you to go to make an extra special like a uh, mocktail uh, menu, right? Uh, with really good fake drinks for people. Yeah, yeah. That week, mix, you know, mi mix it up. What the one of the first times I was ever at Comedy on State, they made a a baby Yoda drink mm -hmm. that I was like, could I get a non alcoholic for it? The Mandalorian had just come out, right? Okay. And uh and it turns out my brand might be a little nerdy. And um <laughs> sure. so mm -hmm. and so it um yeah, so th they had a, a a baby Yoda drink that was actually quite popular, but it had booze in it and I got a non-alcoholic version of it that was uh it just tasted like, you know, soda pop, but it was um it looked cool. <laughs> cool. Um so I was on one night I was, Oh, here's what happened on Saturday. So Saturday we had two shows on Saturday and we started a little bit late and I've been doing it. Cause I said, I want to be able to, I need to be on stage for an hour just so I, cause I have to be on stage for an hour in a month. Right. So not to be an asshole and not to keep everyone unnecessarily late. I just have to know what feels like an hour all the time. Okay. So, cause usually I don't, I usually do, I don't know, maybe I do close to an hour, but I don't try to always do over and stuff. I'd rather right. do, an hour and 10 in April, and then we have stuff to edit, then do yep. exactly an hour and have to leave everything in, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so then on, so Saturday, the manager goes, um, uh, Hey, can you do 45 on this one? And I was like, what? Oh, oh, okay. I mean, but I, I, you know, all right. Gulp, you know, why? I just because they had, we had another show to see and we had to turn things around and stuff like that, you know? So she didn't want me doing an hour on the first show. Right. And, and, and we never, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, but yeah, cause you could have cut everybody else's time. Yeah. Uh, so I said, okay. And then, um, so I started, I'm like, all right, it's going to be pure material. Bing, 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 bing. Nice. Right. Do 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 bullet 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 and I'm and I and and I was supposed to get a light at forty, and then another light at forty five, right? And mm -hmm. I keep going, and I'm getting close to, like my last bit, and I haven't even got the light at forty yet. I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? I've been doing this exact set's been taking an hour and eight, and now it's not even forty. Yeah. So I tell the audience now. Uh, Five ten years ago, I would have been like, I have to pretend to be professional. So I told you, <laughs> I gotta check my watch. I don't, I, my clock. I don't even know how much time I've done. So I look at my phone because I don't have a watch anymore. I look at my phone. It's at fifty. And I, so I hadn't got my light yet. So I, I said, I just, I kind of just said to the manager, it's a sold out crowd. But I'm like, oh, I should get off now. I'm five minutes over what you wanted. And she yeah. goes, do ten more. And I'm like, hey, this, asshole, I could have yeah. planned this from the start had I known. Yes. But um, yeah, so then but the audience knew I. And so I was like, all right, I'm just going to talk to you, motherfuckers. And so I started mm -hmm. talking to him and it it was fine. Um, yeah. And then I did my closing thing. Right. But then. Oh, so a guy yells in the back. He goes, talk about your Hispanic son more. 
<laughs> Aww, a fan. I just, I just have one joke about him now that that is about him being Hispanic, and I I thought, oh, I wonder if he saw that bit on TikTok about me. Mm-hmm. Not um, the James Corden one, or no, no, the one where I throw him in the pool to teach him Spanish. Okay, but I thought I should have that one in my back pocket because I've kind of. Um, Tamar, to me, that bit is dead to me now, right? Right. But right. people, if they want to hear it, you know, and I need to kill time anyway, I should be able to sure. pull it out. But I didn't. So I I just, um, I kind of skirted away from that. But I'm like, dang it, I should, I didn't want to start it and then not be able to finish it. Because right. I had gone That's over That's the it. worst is when yes. you can't. Well, I don't I don't know that you're talking about this, but I, I hate starting a bit that someone has requested. And I can't remember how it ends. Yeah, you just pray. Now, often your muscle memory of your mouth just kicks in and you're like, hey, this is a good bit. Why did I drop this? As it's coming out of your mouth, right? It's a right. nice surprise. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so the, the show ended up being like an hour and four. <laughs> but it's right. like, hey, you know, I, I could have planned it a little bit better. And right. there were definitely opportunities for crowd work earlier that I skipped because I, I, I just wanted to, you know, yeah. I had the guy told time. me yeah the guy told me he was going to light me at 50 and then he forgot because he's also running a restaurant right so um so i literally i think on thursday and they had this they were so tired right on that first show that i was um that i didn't like my set quite honestly on thursday it was fine it wasn't great Mm-hmm. I would prefer to be carried off stage and have a parade. <laughs> right. Uh, and there, nobody was making pinatas, so there was nobody sure. was boiling oil and and getting feathers, so it was fine. But I was irritated, and you know what fixes a bad set or a mediocre set is another set. So first show, I thought Saturday, you were going to say booze. No, actually, booze never did fix a set. <laughs> if I drank before I went up. I didn't care how it went. That's why ah. I only did that twice because I wanted to care. Yeah. And um, but the uh uh I will say that the so the first the first set Saturday was good. They were they were more warmed up. There was I mean there, but there was that weird guest set, so it was less right. And then the guy didn't stay to do a guest set second show. <laughs> I was like Of course not. Uh, what the hell? Uh, yeah, please. It, it was, it was, yes. He was just, well, he was, it was, it was amazingly about him. This sort of confidence is amazing for me, for someone who doesn't know me. None of them know me. And and the club owner guy was really nice about, he said, you know, the booker told me to ask if this, if the, if the openers were okay, but I just kind of let it go. And I'm really sorry. Uh, Next year, I totally will ask. And I was like, yeah, if you're still open, I hope I hope you still are. <laughs> Jackie. <laughs> I didn't say that. I oh, just okay. I, right. No, no. I just I was like, well, no, that'd be great. I would appreciate I would appreciate that. Yeah. I would like I would like to bring because I talked to Pete and Pete brought his own opener. He brought uh one of the guys from from Minneapolis. Yeah. And I could just grab a local comic. Sure. You know who would kill there is Mary Mack, just because she's country. Oh my god. But she's yeah. not it's smart so um i talked to her i had lunch with chad and lewis chad daniels mm-hmm. and lewis lee mm-hmm. and um chad moved back to minneapolis um oh from kids, that place he was living where he grew up yeah okay uh because and his his son is renting his house and his daughter is going to college and so now he lives like six blocks from acme and, cool yeah i'm and happy he, for him you know it's so great, great three job. hours three hours to get to the airport from oh, fergus constantly, falls constantly that guy doing that trip and he raised his kids it seems like they're good kids and it's yeah. like god dang you did it that's fucking amazing it is um, amazing. i would say greg fitzsimmons has done that and brian kiley although kiley also had a writing job but sully I mean, mccullough sully mccullough sully, also, yeah it's very it's just fucking hard and they're still in it and they're still funny 
Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really cool to see, you know? Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. like having a complete renaissance or I don't know if it's a, you know, it's his, the momentum that he slowly built at doggedly doing all this kind of work and driving. It's finally totally paying off. It seems like, right? No. He, yeah. That wasn't the story I was going to tell, but yeah, oh. he's, he's a great, yeah. I mean, that's all he wants. He, you know, he was, I think he switched to a new PA agent okay. over at CAA, I think. And um, and they're like, well, what else do you want to do? And he's like, well, I wanted to raise my kids into decent human beings. And I want to yeah. do stand-up comedy. And uh, And then, you know, and then much like all of us, he would like to sell the idea for his act every year and never make it. <laughs> yeah just several hundred thousand dollars every year and then not have to do it but yeah. i i mean i don't know that. but uh but i do know that uh lewis was talking about because i have loose just the greatest ideas right he really has great ideas and he has the right setup for um to film clips yeah and yeah andy andy has a good setup if you want to record a new album just audio because his audio the the audience is mic'd right and you can get multi-tracks out of it like the stuff that he automatic that they automatically send you is all stereo and kyle you know you would know this is that mm -hmm. you, you you can turn the album you can do an album from stereo yeah but multi multi-track you can massage it better right yeah it gives you more of a control over the sound of the audience or the, the sound of, of you know your voice you can duck in and out and play with volume the more mics you have the more options you have to a point mm -hmm. then it becomes too much Right, right. And but multi track is better. And so, but what Lewis was suggesting was to do really old bits that have no video from earlier albums and and albums that don't have specials attached to them. Oh and, my God. Yeah. And then just do seven minute sets and then clip them out of yeah. old jokes. Yeah. And then you remember those weird old jokes. I, uh, cause I'm, I'm trying to pick. So I was trying to pick some, some, cause I, the way I, I just put up the time travel bit on my TikTok and I'm, I'm about to take it down. Cause I think it has like 500 views. Um, and I, and I just put a slideshow of just, you know, essentially, but that I guess the people who watch TikTok would actually like to see my mouth move. Oh, okay. So you're taking it's it down. just the audio. Yeah. 500 isn't enough views for you no no i wow. I would like it to be five hundred thousand or a million two or i only have one with five hundred thousand everything else is like you know there's a couple the crowd work stuff i work so hard on picking and editing it does okay on tiktok it does better on on Instagram. reels i guess yeah i don't know what you know i don't know and i forget to do youtube shorts because i'm exhausted I by the time i get there I know I do. I make the clip and then I put it, do Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube shorts. And then I'm like, I fucking hate everything, you know? Right. I just want to lie down. Cause you gotta, cause you, cause you can't use the, the watermark from the other thing. So you have to recreate all the captions. Well, and... so TikTok, will, they'll take it. I mean, oh, they'll take it, but they, they, they it affects the algorithm. Ah, fuck. Sometimes the the um the captioning is so difficult if you're doing audience work, like mm. crowd work stuff that yeah, yeah. I just want to caption it once. I can't I can't do it again. It's a pain in Fair the ass. Enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now Facebook and uh, Instagram are the same. They're both Meta, so that doesn't affect a Facebook reel. I don't think if you have Instagram on it, they probably like it. Yeah, but it's weird, like. Um, last week, uh, I guess none of us got spots because <laughs> Ralph Barboso was in town and he had eight sold out shows at the improv. And this is See, all what, who is he? He's a comic. He's funny. He's a comic. Right. From Texas, okay. Texas? And he just, it was weird. Taylor Williamson was just telling me about him like two weeks ago. He's like, yeah, he was talking about, you know, TikTok and all this stuff. And we're all, you know, all of us comics are just like horrified by all the extra work we now all of a sudden have to do to compete, right? And um, 
so anyway, he was just mentioning that Ralph had just opened for him and he's very funny and stuff, but he was just, you know, regular comic, op- you know, featuring and stuff like that. And then she clicked for some reason on TikTok and, um, and he got really massive really quickly, like within a couple months so that he could sell out eight shows at the improv within a couple months, which is Hollywood, kind of, Hollywood improv. It's incredible. It's like, uh, it's, That's it's cool. also like, really what, cool. the, what world is this? And <laughs> yeah, it's overwhelming that that's, is that expected? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we're not all, going you're to expecting it. No, that. no, you aren't. And, and the, and, and quite honestly, where I'm at with it is I'm like, I'm going to do as much as I can. Right. And I hope it works out. Yes. But I'm also not going to sweat it that I'm not, you know, what I did get to watch though, is I've watched more clips of other comics that I've, that I think I've ever watched. And yeah. um, I saw Ismo, not Ismo. Um, you just said Taylor, Taylor. Yeah. I don't know how I mix William. those two up. Yeah. Uh, Tomlinson, but it was William, such... Williamson or Tomlinson. Tomlinson. Taylor oh, Tomlinson. Yes. Yeah. Woman. Williamson is and, uh, from uh, AGT and last comic standing guy. Right. Right. Yes. Um, but Taylor Tomlinson, I saw her, uh, I saw a clip of her mm-hmm. and it was outstanding. It was, it was, it was so, it was just really yes, fun right. and smart yeah. and silly and all the yeah. things I like about stand up comedy. Right. And I, and I, and so that's kind of neat. And then it's also cool that I've been getting, like, I, somebody told me, and Amber, uh, whatever somebody was working with Zach Galifianakis and he was I guess talking about how much he loves my Instagram reels <laughs> oh cool it's <laughs> like well thank you Zach Galifianakis uh, you are I've always been a very silly funny man so that's <laughs> that's it's always nice to be it's nice to be liked yeah anyway for- hey 30 minutes you want to take that break and then we can talk about the comic of the week yeah Wait, let me just double check her last name because she's got a hybrid last name. Yeah, um, hyphenated. Hyphenated, yes. Hold on. I, I, I had to check my scent box. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, so John Fox is telling me about this lady because she's a Bay Area comic. Her name is Gina Stahlhaven. And uh, she was on AGT. Um, I, I don't watch America's Got Talent that much, you know, unless a friend's on it or something and it pops up i really like i don't know who's on who's doing well on agt but she did really well and um she's very funny she's from uh the north bay novato and uh yeah she's a bay area gal she's a mom she's got three kids um and simon simon didn't like her like did you watch her agt appearance no she's really funny joke about what happened to her body after she has kids which is oh. exactly the kind of joke <laughs> Simon and certain men don't want to hear women talk about. Like they just yeah. want women to talk about getting anal or something or what, some version <laughs> of that. Right? They Ooh, don't want to stuff. hear. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want to hear of anything else about, they don't want to hear about your body, mother to anything, you know, real. Right. They just want. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway. They just- they want the holes that they want to stick their dicks in. Yeah. <laughs> but so she's she did a really funny joke about about the change in her body, and uh, so he didn't like it, but the other three did, and Howie really like gave her good feedback. Oh, so great. anyway, she got passed on to the next level. I don't know what happened. I think, but I think she did pretty well. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. So what's her handle? Did you just say it? Uh, the funny Gina. She's on Instagram. I don't think she's on Twitter. Awesome. Well, yeah. Everybody, follow her. Watch her reels. I watched one of her reels. It was very funny. Oh, cool. And yeah. So I think it was in. It was at Tommy T's. I think maybe. Oh, I don't yeah. know where it was. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff happening there. So. Mm-hmm. Um. Did you ever see the? This is a very lateral question. Did you ever see the Heat? Sandra Bullock, Melissa McCarthy. No, I did see Heat, and I have seen it many times, but not the Heat. Okay, Heat is some sort of uh, like cowboy gangster it's movie, Michael right? It's Michael Mann uh, directed with uh, De Niro and Pacino and Tom yeah. Sizemore and Val Kilmer 
and um the one who played Jed. that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about sandra bullock and melissa mccarthy i, I know and it's an amazing movie and it's so fucking funny because in the beginning of the movie melissa mccarthy busts a john who's um has his his wife has five kids and he's like she just had another kid and she's all messed up down there and <laughs> melissa mccarthy pulls him through an open window and it is some of the funniest physical comedy i've ever seen oh, cool. I, I, i'm not a huge i don't physical comedy for me i don't know i've always been a bit of a snob but uh melissa mccarthy i laugh till i cry i own that <laughs> movie. that movie is ridiculously funny yeah i uh on the on the plane I saw everything everywhere all at once again. And I okay. saw the woman King. Oh and yeah. Saw, yeah. Yeah. And I saw, um, Oh, well, Raiders of the lost Ark. It's on, it's on a rotation. So <laughs> it's, a, it's nice. It's nice to have in the background. So sure. 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 While I, while I read my book. Oh, the, the series that I'm all caught up with is this, uh, British mystery series, um, set in between world war one and world war two, Maisie Dobbs is the name of the uh uh the whatever genius you know sherlock holmes character it's actually quite great but this is of interest to you because your close friends uh chelsea and hillary clinton have optioned the book series oh my god my gals <laughs> the ladies you got to <laughs> pictures with and you know them yes i do i for a moment in time i had uh hillary clinton's attention me <laughs> it was very wild i also for several seconds had michelle obama's attention when i met her very briefly in uh qatar or gutter i don't know i cannot i don't remember how they've settled on pronouncing it mm -hmm. uh when i did the the uso shows with conan and she came and uh, she met all of us and for a moment in time I was swimming in Michelle Obama's big, beautiful brown eyes, and we were one, and we were very good friends. <laughs> and then she moved on. She's never contacted me again, but I right, never right. right. You can't forget. I once shook uh, Jimmy Carter's hand, so oh. it was very, very quickly. It was uh, my uh, my high school marching band played at one of his rallies when I was yeah. There in 1979 and he lost but um we also played at ronald reagan's and i didn't try to shake his hand because his <laughs> hand is made of spiders so uh, Do you know my him. uncle met ronald reagan my uncle yeah. met him attainable at attainable goal uh but why uh how did your uncle get to do it my uncle my uncle was the ceo of <laughs> Merlin's department store mm. okay and he got some retail award and <laughs> he met he met ronald reagan it was crazy we didn't Capitalism. even get a discount at mervyn's by the way i <laughs> took the full price for dittos jackie funny okay so i'm um, speaking of buying things at department so my cousins stores. have mervyn's money that's what i'm telling you <laughs> i um bought a pair of uh new shoes i bought a pair of nikes because i um wanted shoes with tread is what mm -hmm. I wanted because mm -hmm. I keep falling down because I keep mm -hmm. walking around looking at my camera, my phone rather, and um, I will eventually break a hip and then someone will put me in a chair and park me against a corner wall. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the, yes, um, all that will happen. As all you that will happen, happen, as I know. So, so that's why I bought some Nikes. Yeah. In the picture of the Nikes, it said on it Gore-Tex on the side, which is a waterproof, very nice. Yeah a petroleum product uh i wanted it so i bought it uh, when you see a picture on a product and it says something like gore-tex you don't think that when you get that product it's gonna say gore-tex it's a nike shoe they both say each of the shoes say Gore it would be like buying a photo and it said <laughs> getty images on it, it one of the silliest i was like okay. why would nike doesn't Nike like they're very proprietary? Why are they allowing Gore Tex to advertise on their shoe? I don't know because that's the biggest. I mean, the even the Nike swoop is not as big, yeah, as wow, as the, as the Gore Tex word. Jackie, I am in a hotel room. All right, uh, there is a 7 Eleven, you know, down the street. Oh, right, Palms, that's right, because you're dodgy. coming back tomorrow, right? Yes, it's a little dodgy that walk. And all the food I have now are hard-boiled eggs, a pickle, 
and Fritos. This is not how I want to spend Sunday night. No, I, for some reason, I, when you said, I forgot it was Sunday, I'm literally, I'm so exhausted that I was like, oh, she's at home. No, you are not. You have no. one more night I, and you didn't I'm drive. At the Wild Palms. No, you, I flew. Oh. I flew. Oh, did they send the limo? No, I did Ubers and Lyfts and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Jackie, I met so many, all the, all the Uber drivers are like the smartest people I've ever met. They're all, every single one was an immigrant. They're all students. They're all, you know, it it was kind of insane. I I felt like I was like, like being driven by like future, um, I don't know, physicists and all that kind of stuff. But uh, everyone, it was, you know, everyone had a little story to tell. It was pretty, pretty interesting week of getting to know, they were all men, but you know, it was all. Yeah. Oh no, there's one woman. Oh my, and her story was crazy. What? She had been homeless for 18 years. Oh and my gosh. She had a daughter. Like she moved to the South Bay from Sacramento because her daughter was given fentanyl by her her boyfriend's uncle. It was all like, what the fuck? Oh my sh- god! And this what? is all on the ride to Roosters. And uh, you know. <laughs> Anyway, uh, nice gal though, and uh, <laughs> and I'm glad you yeah. had right. a good, decent car. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was just gonna say, remember what happened to me at Wooster, Roosters three, four weeks ago when I was there? Is I got pulled over by the cops. Oh uh, right, I, right. I cut that cop off on the way right to the club, and yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. So you're probably shrewd to not. So you don't have a car, so you can't go to the grocery store. No, I've been, um, no, I've been, it's been a bad food week for this gal. Yeah. Um, I brought a bunch of apples. <laughs> I've been having the breakfast there. The, you know, it's not that good. The it's granola, okay. I had granola, the granola um, cereal every, every day. Yeah. I, um, you know, cantaloupe, who eats cantaloupe? Fucking nobody. It's, when I go in the morning, especially in the winter, you assholes, why don't you get apples and pears, which are the things that are in no, season? No, people can't. You know what? No one knows how to buy apples, okay? they All they get is grainy apples, and they're disgusting. Get oranges, you know? You can get you oranges. Oranges, oranges are orange. all... Well, you can, but February's the time Hard. to get them because they're in season. So knock yourself out. Get well, yourself Jackie- yeah. This is America. We get everything in season all the time. This is in Britain where they, have you seen the shelves in Brit- Britain? No. Because of Brexit, they can't get, they can't even get lettuce. You know? Oh. They the lettuce blows. Yeah. So badly by Brexit. It's unbelievable. They fucked themselves so badly well, because of Brexit. Well, say 51% of them did. Yeah. The other 49% are having to suffer under all this shit. You know, right. Well, it's exact. It's it's just like Captain Knobjob. It's like fifty one percent or fifty, not even forty nine point eight. And then he kind of, yeah. and he slid in, and then he and he's fucked the United States for. Oh, it'll be a second. By the way, yeah. my joke. And it's not. There's no joke yet. Guess what this. Uh-huh. Guess what this line needs a punchline. Um, but because he, the MC told me that they were also conservative, I got up and I just said. Yeah, this is, you know how I, I say that we live in the, this is the weirdest civil war ever? Yeah. Uh, the next line is, no one on my side is shooting anyone yet, and I'm very disappointed. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> they tightened up on me a little bit, Lori. They tightened up on me. <laughs> they got that. over it. They got over it. I, um, it. I only have so many dick jokes, is what I'm saying. And um, True. But the new the new dick jokes are working. That's kind of exciting. Sure. I found, I found my billionaire joke. That's good. I've mm-hmm. got um I've got some new premises, which are great. Um I could use some more, even though I could just work on the premises I have and write some more punchlines to them because they need more punchlines. But I, I yeah, like this week I'm all here. I'm here this week. I'm doing better half and I'm doing um I need more spots this week. Good night. <laughs> and uh I'm doing a couple of different spots. Um and then next week I go to Bloomington. Okay, so I had I'm not gonna say the club. If you're a local, you can probably figure it out. Okay. So mm-hmm. I had a spot at a club 
this week. Oh yeah, that's right. And I got an email. I had a spot on Thursday, which is in five days. I got an email today. The spot's canceled. The new owner wants, you know, is canceling shows that have low ticket sales. Now this is on a, a Thursday. Thursday, Thursday night. And I haven't even been given a link to it to promote it. But also if you look at the example from this week at Roosters for Saturday, people are buying day of the show went from like 30 tickets to sold out in the day. Okay. Yep. So whoever is kind of in charge of doesn't that club. seem to realize yeah. that this is the way comedy is now. Like yeah. Thursday t- tickets for a Thursday show are going to be sold on Thursday. Yeah. Because people are going to decide on Thursday, they want to go out. Yeah. They're not going to decide ahead of time, unless they think it's going to sell out. It's like John Mulaney or Ralph Barbosa or something, but also now you're going to pay this person a lot more money. You know, I mean, if you're doing your Thursday show with regular comics doing 15 minutes, that's those tickets are going to sell on Thursday and that's that. And right. so this is like, oh, this is not, this is a, but they're, but not it, a good start. Right. They're not thinking, um, or, or they, or they are new. So, I mean, they'll I mean, figure it out, but it's like, it, you know, that also makes the comics on, it was another show too. Those shows go, oh, well, a spot here isn't guaranteed. So, I should book some other spot. I should book a different spot in case. Yeah. And then, you know, whatever. I don't know. I hope they figure that out because mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. not good. It's not good for them. It's not good for the comics. It's not good for anybody. You, you got to know that. The, yeah, it's, not, it's horrible the for the staff. Tickets are, it's everybody are not yeah. going to be sold, you know, uh, five days in advance, especially if you don't even have the links out to the comics. In case, you know, hey, could you post this today? All right, it's a little early, but I'll post it. Yeah, you know, I don't. I, we didn't get anything, so that was like, Lee, that's uh, that's that could be a little messy for a while. I think I think yeah. that'll get sorted out, but it seems like for a little bit that'll be a mess. That's yeah, my- it's just gonna take them a second to figure out how how yeah. to book it. I think. Hey, let's take uh, one more break. Okay. <laughs> okay, we did it. We took- <laughs> We took that break, you guys. I did uh, not watch the Netflix special. Did you? No, I you didn't. not ever, not ever. <laughs> but I w- But if I see Chris Rock and I get to see that closer, everybody says this closer is great. I watched it. I did. I watched. Oh, the- you did. I didn't watch. So I, for some reason, um, maybe it's because I'm on a hotel internet or something. But uh, I'm not able to access everything I usually can. So Netflix isn't letting me watch anything. Okay. But uh, so I just saw clips on Twitter and stuff like that, and okay. um, uh, yeah. So that the closer is, you know, okay. <laughs> he's mad. <laughs> I oh, do feel like the whole what's situation. The, what's the premise? Like, oh, I just said, heard that the closer was was funny. Well, it's so, about Will Smith and Jada. Oh, oh, so, so that's does, how he closed. Okay, it does feel like uh, that makes sense that he would close with that. Yeah, it does feel like a. Uh... I'm so sorry. Like, what else? No, he's doing yeah. a great dick joke, Jackie. No, he has to close. You can't follow your own most famous thing that happened to you in the last year. You have to close on it. So I'm so sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, it, 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 it the whole, the Will Smith thing, that whole thing felt like a personal thing. And this feels like a personal thing. It's so weird to see it being uh argued and debated you know both of them handling it however they're handling it on these major stages the oscars and then a <laughs> the world's first live streaming special. <laughs> it's it's weird to be watching it um yeah you yeah know, that's all i don't think it was the first uh if you should know is that um brian regan did the first live streaming special oh, really? Ra- yeah radio city music hall on comedy central well, Two, like Central three years ago, it's a channel. I'm saying a live streamer. Oh, a streaming. Service. Sorry. Because yeah. streamers are, because if you look at everyone trying to start a late night show on a streamer, the whole thing, it's always like people don't want, people like to binge. They love to go on Netflix and binge. So we can't have your show that airs every Monday or whatever. Right. That's why they canceled Michelle Wolf and, um, Hassan Minhaj I don't know if they was he on Netflix too I forget but the but a lot of it is they're like we're a binge thing that's it 
So if they start doing these live events where it's, you must tune in. That's can, now, can you, can you watch it after now? Can I, you can, but I'm just saying okay. it's, it's good that they're, go, they're going beyond we're a binge thing because that okay. means maybe more other kinds of shows can be on yeah, yeah. maybe even a late night show or something, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, there's obviously if, if Netflix has Netflix does have a worldwide audience, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you have a late night show that's going to air here at 11 in Australia at 11 AM, I don't know. Maybe there's something for that. You know, there's people for that, you know, I right. don't know. Be weird if they booked Zelensky to be the host, though. Yeah, Jackie, <laughs> it would be. He does stand it up. He used be. to do stand up. Would it? Was he... he did. That's true. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you made that point. I was afraid to. So thank you for taking stands. Right, right. Um. Well. Yeah. I uh, how how where 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 are we at? Here? You got ten. Probably minutes. another ten minutes. Yeah. Well, you guys, let me tell you, um, I'm excited about stand-up comedy, but I also am tired. So I don't know. I, I want to bring, I, when I talk to people about who they bring on the road. Yeah. Like Sean Patton goes with Chad. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's but I, and, and I didn't ask, and I, and I know uh, Pete brings somebody too bring some guy and uh and i wanted to ask both of them but i didn't think it was it didn't uh, there you know there's a certain time when you can ask someone what they're paying their openers oh and, I see. and both of those guys make more money than i do but yeah um, regular right they're at theater levels it would be nice to get to theater level or just sold out comedy club levels right sold and they work the, club level is and they too. work the big i believe and they both work the big chains so Wow, I can't believe these male comics are getting so much work. That's good for them. <laughs> right. I mean, there's plenty. I mean, they're at least those two guys are good comics, you know? It's, they are. Not, I'm, yeah, they're not monsters. See, no, no, yeah. I mean, they're they're yeah. great comics. I'm just yeah. saying there's also great female comics that could also be working those chains and they aren't. It'd be great. When I say they, I mean you and me. Right, you and I. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I think Bert Kreischer brought Ian Bag out with him last time. And um I wonder if if Bert asked you to open for him, would you go? Yeah. I wonder if I wonder if I would go. I think I would go. I would assume he pays pretty well. Yeah. Okay. So a major, major headliner said, Hey, I should bring you out on a couple things kind of just threw it out at me because we were out of thing and yeah. he's like you you headline and that made me realize it wasn't it's not the time it's the money and i'm like oh he probably pays not very much money or just as little as he can get away with who you know um, the name. okay mm. i have to turn this thing upside down jackie <laughs> worth it. um worth, it's gonna be worth every moment and a clock eater Oh yeah. So um I'm I'm all in favor Wait. of finding out who this is that you're doing oh right. Ooh. Yeah. So you don't think you don't think that person I don't know. I I I, I here's the thing. If I, I was bet they do good, but maybe not not yeah. enough. Oh, absolutely not great. Like I would here's the thing. Any comic would go out for good money to do 10 minutes in front of somebody, right? Right. But if you're paying okay money, then you might use locals or somebody who thinks that's good money. <laughs> right. right. That's right. That's what I was saying. <laughs> oh and, my god. Uh, so yes. that's why I, I when when the person said, Oh, but you normally headline it, I was like, Oh, it's it's not it's the money. It's probably not very right. good money. And the thing is is at at theater levels, whoever is headlining should pay their openers. First of all, they should do get to do twenty. 25 and just a two-person show and then um they should pay them low headliner money yeah. plus air in a hotel yeah and it could even be shitty headliner money but it shouldn't be feature money without right. without air oh that's my right. dream career <laughs> <laughs> right because that's a sweet spot right when when you're yeah. especially when you're like when i was opening for maria so much it was a delight I imagine it was just because her audiences were so giving. 
uh-huh. and and uh, she was super fair with the money. So, um, yeah, yeah, oh. um, yeah. So, uh, I don't know how we got on this, but oh, I it, it just like, all right, I'm not naming names. You can probably figure out, who <laughs> but I see a lot of these male comics that are going on massive tours. And they're posting pictures on Instagram of all the comics they're with, and they're only bringing male comics on the road with them. And yeah. I'm talking five or six different comics. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a crew. Bring, it's a real crew. You it's a real. Bring, you shouldn't bring just one com- female comic, but you couldn't right. bring just one. I mean, why not two? Doesn't you know? Like, it. Do you not notice? I don't yeah. understand. Do they not yeah. notice or do they not care or do they not want women around them? Yeah. I don't I don't know what it is. It just baffles me that you would have I always I always think that six like male comics on it only in at a stadium full of men and women, you know? Mhm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I I uh, I always assume that like Bert and Chad and Pete wouldn't bring me because um, a I'm too expensive and b um, I don't party and it's not like they part. I mean I think Bert does a fair amount of party, but I mean it's not like they're they're crazy. But I think that you know Brian Regan has an adult beverage, but he's more than willing to go. Well, I, I and I'm like I'm going to go back to the hotel and read a book, and he's like, "Well, I'll see you tomorrow," <laughs> and so he's super supportive of that, and I love that about him. He's, you know, and I don't know if that's true at all. I think that's just a story I'm telling myself. There's obviously a committee meeting going out of my head, going, "It's because you don't do heroin, Jackie. That's why you don't get the work." <laughs> and look, uh, <laughs> I said it before: Carmen Morales can drink any fucking male comic under the table. Okay, if okay. you want to comic who will kill and is funny and and, and then you want to party with and you yeah. can party with carmen is your girl you yeah. know what i mean and there's uh, there's other comics that are uh, that are fun i don't know it just it just it's a bummer to me that's yep. all it's yep. so many so it's many opportunities drag. that are not going to female comics and they don't and, seem to even and care. it's and it's glaringly like we look at the pictures and that's what we see right yeah that there's no and there's there might be one black guy maybe there maybe. might be one maybe. you know brown guy maybe but it's yeah but it's a lot of white dudes a lot of swinging dicks yeah you don't care oh, well well yeah. i mean we always notice they don't ever notice i notice every lineup you know yeah yeah it's because it's because they're they're in their fishbowl looking at their castle and uh we're in our fishbowl going Look at their castle. Looks so great. Yes. <laughs> so we're outside it's... the bowl. Can I get a little water in here? <laughs> These skills. <laughs> the I like those blues, those blue rocks, man. <laughs> so, yep. So I'm home all week. I'm thinking of looking into, uh, well, I'm not going to plant my vegetable garden until the end of the month, but uh, I think I might look mm-hmm. into uh, maybe digging up the garden a little bit. Looking mm-hmm. into it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Good times. I like a veg, is what I'm saying. I'm looking forward to a summer tomato. V E G, folks. Veg, she said. That's it. That's it. And and I'm 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 eating a lot better, uh, so I can close my hands more often, which is nice because all of my uh, I I've been waking up and I haven't been able to close my hands. Wait, so you changed your diet and you knows noticed a difference? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Well, so so did I tell you that I went to my my hippie doctor and my hippie and my hippie doctor wants to sell me vitamins so she made me get blood work. And so I got blood work and then my hippie doctor said, "Do you have a primary care physician?" And when your hippie doctor tells you to go see a western medicine doctor, uh there's trouble. There might be right. some trouble in your in your in your your labs, Jackie. Yeah. And uh it's not uh I I always assume that I'm either pre-diabetic or diabetic. Uh, I am neither of those things, but I seem to be lapping some people on cholesterol. Oh. So, uh, and some sort of inflammatory stuff, and there's liver. I don't know. Yeah. There's, uh, some BS. But so she was like, you're not allergic. I don't think you're allergic to these things, but if you could sort of not do sugar and grains and dairy and caffeine right now, that'd be great. And I'm like, 
What the fuck? That's all I what that's uh that you just talked about breakfast. And um yeah. and she's I, I was like, I will do what I can. And I have done what I can. I am um and so and I do actually feel better. I feel just uh, a little less <sighs> lethargic because I haven't been I, I I haven't been feeling good. So I yeah. I'm psyched we to feel better. Traveling a ton. Right. It's right. Active. And got I gotta hydrate more too. That's the other thing. I I have a bottle Jackie, of Jackie, I picked up a date at the San Francisco Punchline May 3rd through the 6th. So Bay Area, get ready. There's more Lori. I will be at Moon Tower in Austin, uh, late April. Uh, I will be in New York City, March 17th through the 25th. I, oh. this weekend, this Friday, will be at the Hereafter in Seattle. Oh, wow. Friday only. Come on out. And um, yeah, and then into May, I'm at in Oshkosh and I'm at uh, the Laughing Tap. Um, and you can get tickets on killmartin.com. And more more dates to come, Acme in July. Other things happening. Okay. Well, I guess I'll I'll plug yeah. my thing. I'm doing Bloomington, yes. Indiana, the 17th and 18th of March. Uh, in April, I am I home? All of it? No, I got two weeks of the middle. That's that. Those are the. Oh yeah, I'm doing Arden, Delaware. Supposedly, uh, the the numbers for this podcast and for the Dork Forest, I got a lot of Maryland, Delaware happening. So, uh, Arden, Delaware, and Silver Spring, Maryland, uh, the middle of April. Are those and then? Are those regular comedy clubs? No, they're one nighters. They're theaters, oh. tiny theaters. And then uh, I'm doing laughs uh the 21st and 22nd of april oh cool oh i'm at aqua caliente for one night in palm springs march uh 31st with carmen actually is going to open for me so that'll be amazing the mm -hmm. first week of may i'm uh doing the comedy cellar in las vegas the nice. first through the seventh 14 shows at the rio and um that's that's in may uh yeah my june Wow, my June's empty. Hey, vacation. Why don't you do something about that? Um, yeah, and then I'm doing, oh, the week of Comic-Con in July, I'm doing Mic Drop in San Diego. Cool. So, um, oh, I'm in San Diego too. March 31st and April 1st. I'm at doing a don't tell thing. Oh, nice. Oh, that's right. Because yeah. you're recording, right? Yeah, I'm recording the next weekend. So uh, at the, the 8th um april 8th as soon as i have a link i'll put it up i would love it if jackie and laurie fans came to the taping of my special april 8th in los angeles 10 p.m show oh my god let's get out of here 